You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's 5.30 p.m. Uh, I'd like to bring the Brantford Board of Police Commissioners meeting of October 10th to order. Uh, can I please have... Uh, a motion to approve the minutes of uh, September 11th, 2023 meeting. Motion. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, report of the chief. All right. Good evening, everyone. In your packets, you will have um, not only the monthly statistical report, the training report, which the deputy will go over, as well as uh, a copy of our annual report for 22-23 uh, fiscal year that we, we provide. Uh, if you have the opportunity to go through that, a lot of good information, looks at our use of force, looks at our, our pursuits, our qual volumes, some crime trends, uh, distribution of our staff, as well as the current composition and makeup of the department. So um, very well put together report by our crime analysts and um, worth a good look at. It's a good snapshot for us. As far as the monthly statistical report, no significant trends. Uh, accidents were up a little bit. Arrests were down. Our shopliftings were just slightly up. Um, call volume was pretty steady on the behavioral side. We stayed trending pretty steady there. No uh, significant fluctuation. We are still experiencing um, stolen cars and larcenies from vehicles. Um, if you saw the news, they had one the other day in North Brantford where a homeowner went out and confronted them and uh, they fired a shot at the homeowner. So once again, we do uh, encourage the public just to call us, do not try to go out and confront them. Um, the officers are out there patrolling, trying to to curb this, but again, no valuables. Uh, make sure your keys are locked. For some of the newer uh, high-end cars with the key fobs, try to keep those stored within your, your house, closer away from the front door. Um, they do have some technology that can try to pick up that signal. So, you know, if your kitchen's in the center of the house or your, you know, foyer area, try to bring those a little bit deeper into the residence, not on the exterior walls. I know technology mm. yes yeah. so the key fob. oh my goodness for, you know specifically yeah. some of the newer higher end cars yeah, yeah. there is uh, technology out there for them to uh, basically clone or replicate that signal and it will start the vehicle so Jeez. so don't keep it on the whole perimeter of the house <laughs> try not to right. yeah. okay yeah. well I mean depends on what kind of car you're driving Again, it's the higher end, but um, something new, something that was on the West Coast, it seems to be finding its way up. <coughs> uh, as far as the forfeiture report, stable, nothing uh, significant to report. As far as uh, the overall good of the department, we have the four recruits that are up at the Meriden Police Academy. They have to complete their 28 weeks of training uh, we will not see them for quite some time. And it's important to note out to the commission that out of the four, um, we are down an officer on comp. So right now we are five officers short. Budgeted wise, we are full staff on paper. On paper, we are full staff. Operationally, deployment, no, we're, we're down four. Myself and the deputy have uh, been looking at some of the overtime. Um, we're, we're in the ballpark of where we were this time last year, but we can already see the trend. And when we're down this many, um, you know, we're, we're going to probably see a spike in the overtime as we move forward. We have a lot of training coming up that we have to do. Um, so we'll be backfilling. And it's important to highlight this also because, you know, 
with the union contract and just basic time off structures that when you're down this many, um, our likelihood and the probability of replacement costs goes way up. So, you know, if, if someone takes a vacation, you know, there's a good possibility we're going to be replacing depending on what shift just based on these numbers. So we wish those four um, the best and we, we hope to see a successful completion and get them on field training. Um, but that's going to be quite some time. Also, um, as some of you know, attended this morning, we gave our, our farewell to uh, Officer Mike Pileski. He retired as of today, 28 years of service with the Brantford Police Department. In that 28 years, he, he spent probably 75% of his career assigned to the New Haven DEA Task Force. Um, during that time, he was a highly decorated uh, task force officer recognized <coughs> numerous times by the U.S. Attorney's Office as well as uh, receiving combinations, citations in the Medal of Merit here in, in Brantford PD. Uh, we wish Mike well on his uh, retirement and we appreciate all the sacrifices from his family. And just to point out that, um, you know, we, we have sent Joe Harrington, Officer Joe Harrington to that task force now to replace Mike. We felt the need uh, to continue our relationship with them. As you know, they tend to do higher level cases specifically, uh, you know, from the early 2000s with Oxycontin now as we move on into the fentanyl. This crisis is significantly impacting the United States as well as our community and communities of our size. So we need to have someone still in the game um, provides vital intelligence to our detectives as well as our officers and it's a sharing of information and partnership. So we're gonna stick with that and uh, continue our relationship. But again, best of uh, wishes to Mike. As far as correspondence for this month, uh, a noteworthy performance to indicate from a supervisor, Officer Clyburn and Richardson, they were dispatched uh, to a local motel for an overdose. Officer Clyburn uh, noted that the female was suffering from a likely overdose, was able to administer Narcan, and then she had to actually uh, begin hands-on CPR. And her efforts uh, most certainly provided life-saving me measures to re revive the, the woman. Um, so good job by Officer Clyburn. Received a letter regarding Officer Andrew Luzzi. Officer Luzzi is a rather new officer. Um, he was tasked with a wellness check of a local resident here on Hillside Ave. And they just wanted to reach out and say how, how kind and the time and the uh, attention that he provided and wanted to laud the officers for their care, professionalism, and how they handled the situation. Officer William Burkhart, um, a mother wrote in about her son's car accident and how phenomenal Officer Burkhart was in managing the accident, but more importantly, counseling her son and helping her son out. Um, this family had suffered a, a loss, a, a tragic loss in an accident previously. So this made it very hard for them and they wanted to reach out and uh, share their thanks for Officer Burkhardt. Once again, uh, Officer Abley, basically assisting a motorist who's having car trouble. And as usual, Officer Abley has a tendency to make sure he serves the community as best he can and he's quite frequent letter uh, topic of letters so another great job by him received a letter about the marine patrol and thanking us for uh, being present during the annual sunrise cove uh, island swim back on august 12th they thank us for our courtesy and professionalism during the event <coughs> Special, Olympics, Special Olympics Connecticut sent a letter recognizing our telecommunicators for their 
donation <coughs> to the Special Olympics of Connecticut. And uh, the president and CEO wanted to thank them for that. And as you remember uh, from last time I reported, we're, we're proud once again to be a, a leader. Uh, <coughs> Officer Harrigan, Detective Hurton, and a large list of um, employees here, their efforts resulted in us uh, raising about $40,000. So. And lastly, uh, the Blue Star Mothers of Connecticut came in and provided us with some Girl Scout cookies and spent some time, some time with the officers and they wanted to show their appreciation. Um, and I think that the officers enjoyed it more than they did, not only for the cookies, but spending time with, with such a special group. So we appreciate their correspondence. That is all I have. I will turn it over to the deputy for a building and a training update. So I'll start with the building project update. Uh, we've received the design development set from our architect, Ryan Humes. Uh, that's been provided to the Public Building Commission and the Town Engineering Department for the review. So they've been working on that. Um, the set's like over a thousand pages long, extremely detailed. Uh, this Thursday, there's a working group meeting of the Public Building Commission for review of these documents, along with the architect, Humes, and Downs Construction will be in attendance. So Downs now has also been working on their construction documents and cost estimating now that they've received the design development set, which is near complete, but not 100% uh, complete at this time. So uh, cost estimating will be coming. Uh, Downs has also worked on a logistics plan for our move from the police department to the fire department. Um, during construction, certain phases of the construction process where we can't be present and on site. Um, things are under construction here. And just finally, just in this, seeing what I've seen early in the process so far, I just wanted to highlight what I've seen for like the skill and level of oversight that's gone into the project. It's really impressive. Like I said, the design development sets like over a thousand pages long, highly technical. Uh, the town engineer, John Hofferly, went through this set already with fine tooth comb and he's uh, highly skilled really on top of the project came up with a lot of different questions um, and the PBC as well their public building commission they're made up of former architects um, builders they have a lot of experience so there's a, it's a very uh, detail oriented project with a lot of oversight and experience and um, we'll have more to come especially after this Thursday's meeting so for our training synopsis, there was a good amount of training in September. Uh, a few of the highlights, uh, the entire department received legal updates on the uh, 2023 public acts. Uh, we completed pursuit policy, which is a requirement of CALEA as an annual review of our pursuit policy. Uh, Sergeant Emery completed a week-long first-line supervisor training program. Officer Clyburn and Officer Erdos completed a week-long interview and interrogations course, which is a great course. And our training officer, Lieutenant Crangelo, is uh, working towards getting 100% of the officers trained in interview and uh, interrogations. Officer Andre uh, Kotu completed a uh, child safety seat installation course. So he'll be the first officer that we've had trained in child safety seat installation which is a service that we're excited to offer to the public moving forward that we have an officer trained to properly install car seats. So um, look for that, we'll be offering that soon. Uh, officer Clifford and Officer uh, Kotu also completed their uh, third phase of accident, re accident, accident reconstruction training. So uh, six weeks total for that course. They're now certified as accident reconstructionists. And then uh, for community outreach, uh, Sergeant Carney participated in the K-9 Olympics and Sergeant Loftus and Dispatcher Jackie Davis attended Read Across America and they read books to students at Sliney Elementary School. That's nice. Good That's question. Nice. On the child safety seat, is that only going to be for Brantford residents? Um, 
it will be open to the public, so um, I think we'll end up with residents from outside of town. Yeah, and by appointments. I, you know, I don't know how much, how uh, mm -hmm. much oh, activity we'll get. Oh, you'll get a lot of activity. Yeah. There's not a lot of departments still doing it. <laughs> True. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're in the early stages of trying to gauge that because um, he is assigned to the patrol division. So we're trying to work with his uh, shift commander to figure out how we want to do it because one, if it's a Saturday morning type of event, um, he's not capable of himself just doing a lot. So it sounds like we're, we're going to kind of limit to, you know, appointment only and, yeah. and, and maybe open up windows where we'll do it. but. Um, something he had a lot of interest in, something we thought was important. How much we can facilitate is yet to be seen because there's not many of them out there. No, there's you, you, you there's no there are hardly any, yeah. and parents really want it and need it. Well, they should want it and need it. Yeah, but that's really that's great. That's great. All right, thank you for the update, both. Uh, we move on to traffic requests. How do you? Yep. First one is a request for a handicapped parking space in front of Common Ground on Main Street. Uh, the traffic committee recommends no action as the Main Street and the sidewalks are all going to be redone within the coming year. The second one is a request to limit the vehicle height, weight, width, length, and tonnage on Linden Avenue. Uh, we talked about this for quite a time, but the committee recommends no action based on the fact that there's only one way in and one way out. It's a peninsula, and you can't really regulate the height of vehicles and the weight. I mean, people want construction done on their houses or uh, additions. You know, it just doesn't work, so we recommend no action. Request to eliminate the first parking space on the corner <coughs> of Church and Meadow. We uh, committee recommends deferring this until we receive um, a review by the town engineering department. Next one is a request to remove a school <coughs> bus sign on the corner of Door and Pawson. Um, the committee recommends approval for this. Request to eliminate a line of sight issue in front of 1111 Main Street caused by overhanging tree branches blocking the intersection walk sign. Um, we are also um, approving this, recommending approval to the commission, understanding that um, once we approve it, it goes to Public Works and it has to be on their calendar. Request to remove the speed sign on Mill Plain by the first curb. The committee is recommending that we defer this. Uh, the engineering department is conducting a speed study, and uh, we're just deferring this until their study is complete. Lastly, a recommendation to install a four-way stop sign at the intersection of Matthew and Brainerd Roads. This was also a recommendation by the town engineering department. Mm -hmm. It was a three-way at one point, or four-way at one point, then it was reduced to three-way. They're recommending that we put the four-way stop back in, so the committee is recommending uh, approval of this request. Thank you, Patty. Uh, <coughs> report of the chair. Uh, we have to wait for that to do Oh, yeah, you're going to Yeah. So, do, can I lump them all together? You can. So, is there a motion to um, can you? approve the recommendations that I've just stated. I'll make a motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, report of the chair. I don't really have anything except uh, this morning's um, retirement for uh, Mike uh, was well attended. Uh, it was great to see <coughs> friends, family, police, and fire department that came. It just shows how this whole community works together, sticks together, and supports each other. It was a, a great thing to see. Uh, we have no citizens here for comments. So I need a motion to adjourn, please. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.